Hey there! Today I've made a compilation of three fun Life Noggin videos all about animals. And since then there have been a lot of new things that I've learned and great comments from all of you. So I thought it would be great to revisit some of them together again, where I'll be jumping in throughout to add some new commentary and referencing some things I've learned from you. Let me know in the comments what compilations you want me to make next, or answer one of the questions listed in the videos you're about to see. Here's our first video up, which animal is the smartest? From sending people to the moon to creating the almighty spork, you've accomplished some pretty impressive feats of science and technology. Seriously, I mean, it doesn't get much better than the spork. You guys should just quit now. But how do other animals across the world stack up? To the science speedster, Triangle Bob. And I spent a lot of fake money on this, so please don't get it dirty. Let's start off our journey on land by looking at one of the animals that you humans are compared to the most, chimpanzees. Chimpanzees may be even smarter than humans in some ways. Research with a chimpanzee named Ayumu suggests that chimps might have a better short-term memory than humans. My short-term memory is actually terrible, so those chimps have me beat. And did you know that chimps share about 98.6% of human DNA? Also, I'm embarrassed by this, but I recently found out that chimps aren't monkeys. Monkeys and chimps are both primates, but chimps are actually categorized as great apes. Okay, back to the video. The numbers 1 through 9 were put up on a screen with a random arrangement, and Ayumu was able to recall the location and exact sequence of each number after they disappeared. It looks like only a small minority of you humans have this ability. That being said, chimps don't seem to be that spectacular with social intelligence. According to a study, toddlers had a better ability than chimpanzees to watch someone and figure out what they were trying to do and what they wanted. Dogs actually seem to be closer to a toddler's social intelligence than chimps, as they perform better on tests involving cooperative communication skills. Now it's time to take to the skies. Oh, hey there, Mrs. Crow. Just the bird I was looking for, and nice top hat you got there. Crows might actually be pretty intelligent creatures, and studies have come out recently to show it. One, use motion cameras to see that New Caledonian crows use tools in the wild to fish out large beetle larvae from holes in dead wood. Another study showed that crows may understand how to displace water to get a reward. Sorry, real quick, after you watch this video, you guys seriously need to look up videos of crows solving puzzles that humans give them, or using tools. It's fascinating. They completed four out of six displacement tasks, which could put them at the casual understanding level of a five to seven year old human. But probably the most amazing study on our winged friends suggests that they exhibit advanced relational thinking. Crows were able to build relationships like matching different size circles to circles of the same size, and were able to do so spontaneously and without explicit training. This would put crows in the same category as humans, apes, and monkeys in terms of having advanced relational thinking. Put up the hydro shield. It's time to dive into the sea. It's it's that button. Just press just press the button. There we go. Perfect. Here we find the adorable dolphin, who, along with other cetaceans, has a brain that may have advantages over primate brains. This is because their auditory sense is both their primary sense and their main way of communication. If we compare that to humans in general, the primary sense is often visual, and the main way of communicating is usually with noise. Dolphins and cetaceans may be able to literally project an auditory image. This would allow them to do things such as audibly convey an image of a fish to their friends. It would be like if you humans could communicate with holograms. And personally, I think holograms are really cool. So what animals do you think are the smartest? Any animals you would like us to cover next? Let me know in the comment section below. I hope that video didn't get you down. I saw some comments that were along the lines of, all these animals are smarter than me. Hey, listen, some animals might be super smart, but nobody can overanalyze an A24 film quite like humans can. We actually should do more videos like this. Octopi and elephants are ridiculously smart. Okay, next video we have, what would happen to all the dogs if humans died off? Man, I forgot how sad that title was. Hmm. Well, it did make me appreciate my dog, Professor Cuddlesworth, so that's a plus. Let's watch. Furry friends make our lives better. They save lives as police and search and rescue dogs, and take care of us as therapy and service dogs. Studies even show that they improve our health by reducing stress and lowering blood pressure and cholesterol. They also make Twitter slightly more tolerable thanks to their adorable little faces. I don't think dogs can even save Twitter now from what it's turned into, but when I looked more into the whole dogs reduce stress thing, I learned that just interacting with your dog in a positive 
positive way increases oxytocin. That's the feel-good hormone. That's why whenever I get stressed out, I spend time with my buddy, Professor Cuddlesworth. Here, boy. That's a good dog. Yes, you are. It's clear that life without them would be horrible for us. But what about them? If every human suddenly disappeared, what would happen to our dogs? The question really is, do they even need us? Researchers estimate we've been domesticating dogs for 10 to 40,000 years. Since then, we've provided them with food, protection, and shelter. Without humans, dogs that are used to being cared for would need to quickly learn how to fend for themselves. Since no one will be filling up their food bowl, they will need to scavenge or hunt for food. So, dog breeds that are known for their tracking and hunting abilities, like spaniels and retrievers, would have it much easier than other breeds. They will also be living in a world without temperature control. So, some dog breeds that struggle in the heat or cold wouldn't fare well in those climates. Dogs with thick coats, like the husky, or brachycephalic dogs with flat faces, like the bulldog, could easily overheat in hot regions. While breeds with short hair, like the boxer, or dogs with low body fat, like the greyhound, would freeze in cold climates. Good thing Professor Cuddlesworth here falls right in the middle. Plus, he's a skilled hunter. Yes, you are. Dogs are so powerful. It was so nice to see all the comments you made about your dog and how much you love them. Rereading these comments warmed my pixelated heart. Since dogs were bred to be less aggressive than their wolf ancestor, the portion of their brain responsible for the fight or flight response has shrunk, which will make it difficult for most dog breeds when faced with predators. Over time, it's likely that most dogs would adjust to their new lives once they've developed survival skills like finding food and shelter and forming alliances. But it may take a few generations. We've seen this happen with dogs who escape or are released into the wild. Without human contact, they become feral. According to a 1995 study, the first few generations of feral dogs have high rates of juvenile mortality and indirectly depend on humans for food. However, after long periods of time when natural selection has taken its course, we're talking thousands of years here, wild dog species emerge. This is thought to be the story of the Australian dingo. So eventually, dogs will be okay. Though it is reassuring that your little buddy needs you just as much as you need them. So do you have dogs? What kind? And let me know their name in the comments section below. Dogs and humans should never be apart. I learned a lot from making that video, and most of what I learned was that if Professor Cuddlesworth were to ever get deleted, I'll burn the life noggin world to the ground. <laughs> okay, for our final video, we have what's hiding in the Amazon rainforest. If you were hoping it was treasure, then I got some bad news for you. If you were hoping that it was some really cool birds, well, that's really spot on. You're in luck. Enjoy. We've already talked about what's lurking deep in the sea, but what's hiding in the rainforest? Rainforests cover 6% of the planet. 50% of the world's species live in rainforests, and there are some weird creatures out there. This is the patu bird. These Central and South American rainforest birds have huge mouths and bulging yellow eyes. Yes, they really look like this. How could something this attention-grabbing survive in the rainforest? Oh. Oh, well, that's how. These nocturnal birds seemingly transform themselves into tree stumps and branches during the day. They blend right in. Their predators, like monkeys and falcons, mistake the birds gray, brown, and black feathers for tree bark and leave them alone. Fun fact, I actually learned something in the comments. The patu birds are sometimes called poor me ones because of their sad sounding calls. You'll have to listen to really get it. Sounds depressing, right? Okay, that little guy was cute, but some other creatures in the rainforest could, well, haunt your worst nightmares. Meet the kangaroo fish. This Amazonian fish may only be a few centimeters long, but it can do some serious damage. This parasitic little sucker is known to prey on larger fish, forcing itself into their gills. Then the kangaroo's spine opens like an umbrella, locking the fish inside, allowing it to feast on blood from the host's arteries. Legend says that these fish can swim up the urethra of unsuspecting people bathing in the Amazon River. Once it's up there, it's said to eat, oh, Okay, you know what? Never mind. You can 
probably guess what happens next. On to something less horrifying, the rhinoceros hornbill. This incredible bird is found mostly in Southeast Asian rainforests. That second beak looking thing is actually hollow and is used to attract mates. Rhinoceros hornbills are monogamous, so when they find a partner, they mate for life. After finding their sweetheart, the female lays her eggs in a big hole inside of a tree. The two lovebirds then seal the mom and the eggs inside by covering the hole with a paste made of feces and fruit. Ugh. How romantic. About 75 days later, the mom and chicks burst through the seal ready to explore the real world. Talk about an entrance, huh? Last up are the decoy building spiders in the Peruvian and Philippine rainforests. These tiny spiders can be smaller than your pinky nail, but they're capable of some pretty creepy stuff. They craft huge replicas of themselves in webs using leaves, dead insects, and even their own skin. And that is pretty hardcore. Then the real spider hides and shakes the webs to make it look like the decoy spider is moving when something comes along. It's thought to be a defense mechanism used to scare away predators. The rainforest is filled with amazing living things, but experts say we're losing 137 species every day. I know some people were shocked by this part of the video, but listen to this. According to Nat Geo, the Amazon rainforest contains 40,000 plant species, nearly 1,300 bird species, 3,000 types of fish, 427 species of mammals, and 2.5 million different insects. So with it being constantly destroyed, it's no wonder we're losing so many species. Yeah, you heard that right. The rainforests need our help, and humans need theirs too. The Amazon rainforest alone produces 20% of our oxygen, and forests around the world absorb nearly 40% of the CO2 humans produce every year. So yeah, we better figure this out, or we're gonna have a lot more CO2 and a lot less oxygen, and also a lot less fun animals like this little guy. I'm gonna name you Squacko. Doesn't that bug-eyed bird look like something that would be made to sell plushies for Star Wars? That decoy spider was pretty amazing though, right? Although every time I make giant versions of myself, people just usually laugh at them. So make sure you guys give this video a like and comment what your favorite animal is below. I wonder if there are any uncommon faves that I don't know about. Click here to watch this video we did on overpopulation or click here to watch this video. And if you wanna support the people who are fighting age-related diseases every day, then you need to support lifespan.io. Check them out down in the description. As always, my name is Blocko. This has been Life Noggin. Don't forget to keep on thinking.